Hello, Discovery Learners. It is I, Teacher Liz, here, your host once more for this episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It's Monday, so of course I have new observances, history lessons, animals and plants to see, a new place to explore, and of course some Spanish words to learn. And be sure you're logging in for the Zoom sessions provided to you every day by the Discovery Educational Team. So let's not delay anymore. Let's start the show. And now for our daily observances. Our first observance for today is President's Day. On the third Monday in February, the United States celebrates the federal holiday known as President's Day. The day takes place during the birth month of the country's two most prominent presidents, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. While the day once only honored George Washington on his birthday, February 22nd, the day now never lands on a single president's birthday. Across the country, most Americans know the day as President's Day. More and more of the population celebrates the day in honor of all past presidents of the United States who served the country. Throughout the country, organizations and communities celebrate the day with public ceremonies. Here's a brief history on President's Day. The origin of President's Day lay in the 1880s when the birthday of George Washington was celebrated as a federal holiday. In 1968, Congress passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Bill. The bill moved several federal holidays to Mondays, creating the three-day weekend. During a debate on the bill, one proposal suggested George Washington's birthday be renamed President's Day to honor the birthdays of both George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Washington's birthday is February 22nd, and Abraham Lincoln's birthday is February 12th. Although Abraham Lincoln's birthday was celebrated in many states, it was never an official federal holiday. Following much discussion, Congress rejected the name change. Despite the rejection, soon after the bill went into effect in 1971, the observance of Washington's birthday shifted to the third Monday in February. Gradually, President's Day became the commonly accepted name. Over time, the observance has become known as many days to honor both Washington and Lincoln. However, today, another shift has occurred as many see the day as a celebration of all U.S. presidents. So how do you observe President's Day? Some businesses close, including banks, federal buildings, some schools. If you want to celebrate your favorite U.S. president, here are some ways you can participate. Watch a documentary about your favorite president of the United States. For example, on the History Channel, there's a show called The Presidents. Or maybe you can see if you can name all the presidents in order. So who's your favorite president? Let me know in the comment section below. Our next observance for today is... Singles Awareness Day. Womp womp. On February 15th, Singles Awareness Day reminds us that there's nothing wrong with being single. In fact, the day after Valentine's Day points out all the ways that singledom benefits our communities and more. There are several benefits to being unattached. Singles can come as go as they please, with no regard to a partner's schedule, wants, or needs. Career opportunity? A single person doesn't need to consult their spouse before accepting an offer. It's also easier for a single person to keep up with healthy habits. There isn't anyone to sabotage their efforts to work out and eat healthily. Single people also tend to be more self-reliant and involved into their communities. Single people come in all ages. Whether they're single by choice or happenstance, recently single or pursuing singledom for the long haul, they tend to lead independent lives. However, that doesn't mean that they're all alone. Single people may be raising a child or a grandchild. They may be caring for a parent or a sibling. Despite the image of a spinster, a partying bachelor, a single's lifestyle can take quite a different look. They may take many roles from a professional community leader, caregiver, and a volunteer. So how do we observe Singles Awareness Day? Take a closer look to the single people in your life. They may not need a matchmaker, just someone who doesn't see them as a fifth wheel. And our last observance for today is always observed on February 15th, National Gumdrop Day. 
National Gumdrop Day recognizes a favorite candy of many, the gumdrop. There is no question as to what to do. Eat gumdrops and eat as many as you want. Now I bet some people are wondering, what the heck is a gumdrop? You may be familiar with the name, but not really familiar on what it looks like. Well, gumdrops are a tasty, colorful, chewy candy that is made out of gelatin and then coated with sugar. They come in a variety of flavors, and they can be either spicy or fruity. These little candy treats make terrific embellishments for decorating gingerbread houses and other baked goods. Besides enjoying them by the handful, there are many ways to use gumdrops. In cookies, to decorate cakes and cupcakes, in popcorn cake, for crafts, and for gifts. You can also make gumdrops yourself. According to many recipes, you will need vegetable oil, sugar, corn syrup, fruit juice, powdered fruit pectin, baking soda, and food coloring. So how do we observe National Gumdrop Day? Well, of course, go to the store and pick up some gumdrops. There's a wide variety of flavors, as I mentioned earlier. So go ahead and pick your favorite and enjoy. On this day in history. Today, in 1950, Walt Disney's animated film Cinderella premieres in Boston. On February 15, 1950, Walt Disney's animated feature, Cinderella, opens theaters across the United States. Based on the Brothers' Grimm fairy tales, was chosen for its similarity to Snow White's story. The film's immediate source was Charles Perrault's French version of the fairy tale, which tells the story of a young girl whose father dies, leaving her at the mercy of her oppressive stepmother and two unsympathetic stepsisters. As in Snow White, Cinderella gets the help of a few friends in this case, singing mice and birds as well as a fairy godmother to escape the prison of her servitude and win the heart of Prince Charming. Along the way, it, it, along the way to its happy ending, a Disney trademark film featured lively animation sequences and enduring songs like A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes and the Oscar-nominated Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. Six years in the making, Cinderella became one of Disney's best loved films and one of the highest grossing features of 1950. As with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and other classic animated features, the studio held periodic re releases of Cinderella in 1957, 65, 73, 81, and 87, keeping its popularity alive among new generations of moviegoers. Wow, isn't history awesome? Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Galileo Galilei, born February 15, 1564 in Pisa, Italy. This famous Italian inventor is also known as the father of science. His contributions included confirming the phases of Venus, discovering four of Jupiter's moons, and inventing the thermoscope, the precursor to the thermometer. As a major figure in the scientific revolution, his advocacy of the theory of heliocentricism, which postulated that the Earth revolved around the Sun, made him an enemy of the Catholic Church. Before he was famous, while training to become a doctor under his father's wishes, he became fascinated with mathematics, which led him to study the stars. He unfortunately passed away January 8th of 1642 at the age of 77. But an interesting thing to know about him is that the scientist Stephen Hawking, in his work on Shoulders of Giants, celebrated Galileo for giving birth to modern science. Happy birthday, Galileo! Our next little figure born today is Susan B. Anthony, born February 15, 1820 in Adams, Massachusetts. This American activist was a suffragette reformer who led protests for women equality. She co-founded both the women's temperance movement and the women's right to journal the revolution. Before she was famous, she worked as a teacher to help her father pay off his debts. She unfortunately passed away March 13, 1906 at the age of 86. But another cool thing to know about her is at the age of 17, she began collecting petitions to ban slavery. Happy birthday, Susan! 
Another notable figure born today is Jane Seymour, born February 15, 1951 in Haynes, England. This British actress who became known as TV's Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, and was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress for her portrayal of Wallace Simpson in the 1988 film The Women He Loved. Before she was famous, her real name is Joyce Penelope Wilmina Frankenberg, and she took King Henry VIII's third wife's name as her stage name. She had also co-starred with Roger Moore in 1973 James Bond film, Live and Let Die. She turns 69 years old today. Happy birthday, Jane. Another notable figure born today is Matt Groening, born February 15, 1954 in Portland, Oregon. This American cartoonist is the brilliant creator of the anime TV shows The Simpsons and Futurama. He was also known for his long-running comic strip Life in Hell. Before he was famous, he went to Evergreen State College in Olympia, Washington, a liberal arts college that gave out evaluations instead of letter grades. His Simpsons characters gained popularity and exposure on The Tracy Ullman Show until he initially teamed up with James L. Brooks and created the Simpsons standalone show. He turned 66 years old today. Happy birthday, Matt! And our last notable figures born today is Matt and Ross Duffer, otherwise known as the Duffer Brothers. These American TV producers are the writers, directors, and creators of the Netflix original series Stranger Things. Before they were famous, they both studied film at Chapman University's Dodge College of Film and Media Art. They were born and raised in Durham, North Carolina and would later relocate to Orange County, California. They turn 37 years old today. Happy birthday, Duffer Brothers. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along as we take a journey to the place of the week. This week we are traveling to Maldives. And do you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Well, of course, that's the Maldivian National Anthem. Sounds pretty neat, huh? Now let's take a closer look at the Maldivian flag. This nation's flag consists of a white crescent on a green panel surrounded by a wide red border. The Maldivian National Flag has a green panel with a white crescent. This is to symbolize the national religion, Islam, as well as progress, prosperity, and peace. Its broad red border is a reminder of the traditional red flag and of heroes who sacrificed themselves for the nation. This current iteration of the flag has been in use since July 26, 1965. Wow, pretty neat. And I kind of like the moon on the flag. Let's move on and learn a little bit more about Maldives. Maldives is an independent island country in the North Central Indian Ocean. It consists of a chain of about 1,200 small coral islands and sandbanks, some 200 of which are inhabited, group and clusters, or atolls. The official name for Maldives is the Republic of Maldives. Its form of government is a multi-party republic with one legislative house, the People's Majilis. Its head of state is a president and Maldives' capital is Malay. Their official language is Maldavian. And the most popular religion is Islam, which may come as a surprise as their close proximity to Sri Lanka and India, which their major religions happen to be Hinduism. Maldives' main monetary unit is the rufia. 16 Maldavian rufia equals one US dollar. Fun fact about the rufia, it is considered one of the world's most beautiful currency. Their banknotes exhibit animal life and the peoples of their nation, printed on soft paper with vibrant colors. Maldives' current population is 557,400 people. Maldives also has a total area of 115 square miles. That's about nine times smaller than the U.S. state of Rhode Island. Life expectancy on Maldives is up to 75 years old. Its main export is fish. 
and tropical fruit. And its money-making industry is tourism. Wow, Maldives seems like a beautiful place. Definitely a place worth a visit. And there's definitely more to learn. So be sure to stay tuned all week as we teach you more about Maldives on Ability to Learn. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the stingray. Stingrays are a diverse group of fish characterized by their flattened bodies. They can be found in oceans in tropical and subtropical areas around the world. Stingrays like warm, shallow waters. Most of their time, they'll be hidden on the ocean floor. There are 60 different species of stingrays. Some of them are threatened. Here are some fun stingray facts. The largest stingrays can reach up to 6 feet in length and about 790 pounds in weight. Wow, that's big. Stingrays are the close relatives of the shark. Like sharks, they don't have bony skeleton. Their skeleton is made of cartilage, same material that builds our noses and our ears. Their flattened body ends with a long tail that usually contains a spine and venom. The spine can be serrated in some species of stingray. That means sharp and pointy. They use their spine and venom to protect against predators. Stingrays can kill a lot of different animals, including humans. Ancient green dentists use stingray venom as an anesthetic. People that live in the areas where stingrays can be found use their spines to make weapons, such as daggers. Venom remains deadly even if it's extracted from a dead stingray. Their eyes are located on the top of their heads, but they do not use their eyes to find prey. Stingrays use electrosensors which help them detect electrical charges that their prey emit. The mouths are located on the bottom side of their body. When they catch clams, shrimps, and mussels, they will crush and eat them using their powerful jaws. Besides the mouth, they have gill slides and nostrils at the bottom side of their body. They swim by moving their flippers up and down. These movements are similar to movements of the wings of birds, and it is sometimes said that stingrays fly through the water. They are usually solitary, but they sometimes swim in groups. Groups of stingrays are called a school. Most of their time, they will be hidden on the ocean floor. Shape and color of their body allows them to slip underneath the sand and become invisible to enemies. Stingrays can give birth to up to two to six young each year. Baby stingrays are born fully developed. They look like miniature versions of the adult animals. Babies take care of themselves from the moment they are born. And they can live up to 15 to 25 years out in the wild. Wow, stingrays are pretty neat. And I know that some aquariums allow you to pet them. But their spines make them a little dangerous. What do you think of the stingray? Let me know in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the Plumeria. The Plumeria, also known as the Frangipani, is a small genus of 7 to 8 species that grow in tropical and subtropical Americas. The genus consists of mainly deciduous shrubs and trees that grows in Mexico, Central America, and Venezuela. Produces flowers ranging from yellow to pink. From Mexico and Central America, Plumeria has spread all tropical areas of the world especially Hawaii, where it grows so abundantly that many people think that is native there. Plumeria flowers are the most fragrant at night in order to lure the sphinx moths to pollinate them. The flowers yield no nectar simply to trick their pollinators. The moths inadvertently pollinate them by transferring pollen from flower to flower in their fruitless search for nectar. The Plumeria species may be propagated easily by cutting the leafless stem tips in the spring. Cuttings are allowed to dry at the base before planting in well-drained soil. Cuttings are particularly susceptible to rot in moist soil. There are more than 300 named varieties of Plumeria. In Mesoamerica, Plumerias have carried a complex symbolic significance for over 2,000 years, with striking examples from the Maya and the Aztec periods to present day. There are now common neutralized plants in southern and southeastern Asia. In local beliefs, they provide shelter to ghosts and demons. The scent of the plumeria have been associated with the vampire and melee folklore, that they're even planted in cemeteries. They are associated with temples in both Hindu, Jan, and Buddhist cultures. 
Several Pacific islands such as Tahiti, Fiji, Samoa, Hawaii, and New Zealand and Tonga, the plumera flower species are used for making lace. In modern Polynesian culture, the flower can be worn by women to indicate their relationship status. Over the right ear is seeking a relationship. Over the left ear means they're taken. The plumera is the national flower of Nicaragua, where it is known under the local name Sacuanhochi. And plumera is also the national flower of Laos, where it is known under the local name of Champa. In Bengali culture, most white flowers, in particular plumera, are associated with funerals and death. In the Philippines and Indonesia, palmera, which is known in Tagalog as Kalatsutsi, often is associated with ghosts and graveyards. Plumeras are often planted on cemetery grounds in both countries. There are also common ornamental plants in houses, parks, parking lots, and etc. in the Philippines. Balinese Hindus use the flowers in their temple offerings. Some species of plumera have even been studied for potential medicinal values. Wow, these flowers are pretty. And I do think of tropical places when I see them. What do you think of the plumera? Go ahead and share your thoughts in the comment section below. And now for the word of the day. Today's word is coincidence. It's a noun. It means a remarkable concurrence of events or circumstances without apparent causal connection. Coincidence. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is atoll. It's a noun. It means a ring-shaped reef, island, or chain of islands formed of coral. Atoll. Hola, Discovery Learners! So yo, tu maestra Liz! Hello, Discovery Learners! It is I, your teacher Liz. And, este es tu español, la palabra de la semana. What that means is, here's your Spanish word of the week. La palabra de la semana es, abrazo. 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 Which means, hug. Abrazo. Hug. Abrazo. Hug. Let's go ahead and use this word in a phrase. Dame un abrazo. Dame un abrazo, por favor. Dame un abrazo. Which means, give me a hug. Dame un abrazo. Give me a hug. Dame un abrazo. Give me a hug. Go ahead and practice Spanish all week long by saying, Dame un abrazo, por favor, which means, give me a hug, please. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish word of the week, right here on Ability to Learn. Hey, Discovery Learners, it's me, Andrew Lancaster, with a new list of movies to watch this week. Since we're still in the month of February, let's continue our list of romantic movies. Up first is Cinderella, rated PG, from 2015. This romantic family film has a 1 hour and 54 minute runtime. It stars Lily James as Cinderella and Helena Bonham Carter as Fairy Godmother. It can be found on YouTube and DVD. Up next is The Book of Life, rated PG. From 2014, this family comedy has a 1 hour and 35 minute runtime. It stars Zoe Saldana as Maria and Channing Tatum as Hakeem. And it can also be found on YouTube and DVD. And finally, The Parent Trap, rated PG from 1998. This family comedy has a 2 hour and 8 minute runtime and stars Lindsay Lohan as the twins and Dennis Quaid as the father. It can be found on Disney+. Plus. Let's take a deeper look at this cinematic work of art. This week's cinematic work of art and Black History Month Spotlight is Black Panther, rated PG-13. This action-adventure film from 2018 has a 2 hour and 15 minute runtime and is directed by Ryan Coogler. Music by Ludwig Gurenson. It stars Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther, Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger, and Denai Guerrera as Okoye. 
Black Panther. Black Panther is one of my top five favorite Marvel films. It is spectacular. It is emotional and powerful. It is empowering to have a hero of color who fights for what's right. The film set designs has beautiful artistry from African culture blended seamlessly with cyberpunk, creating an enveloping world punctuated by the Oscar award winning musical score that blends hip hop, rap, and the rhythm of African drums and chants. The message that a king is not above his people, coupled with a well-developed villain, make this a cinematic work of art that is just so special. And even though Chadwick Boseman sadly passed away, he will always be the Black Panther. Wakanda forever. Here is today's interesting fact. Did you know that conversation hearts were originally invented to be throat lozenges? It's true. The story of Conversation Hearts begins in 1847, when a Boston pharmacist named Oliver Chase invented a machine that would make it easier to produce lozenges. At the time, apothecary lozenges, basically medicine mixed with sugar paste, were in high demand as a popular remedy for sore throats and other ailments. But making them was labor-intensive process, which involved pulverization with moltar and paste kneeling dough, rolling it, and cutting it into small discs. Oliver simplified the process with his lozenge cutter, often considered America's first candy-making machine. The pharmacist then shifted his focus from medicinal lozenges straight to candy, and founded the Chase Company, which later became New England Confectionery Company, or NECO. The candy lozenges became what we know today as NECO wafers. In 1866, Daniel Chase, the brother of Oliver, devised a way to press words onto the candy lozenges using a felt roller pad moistened with vegetable coloring, usually in red. There were a few different theories about the inspiration behind the special printed lozenges. One popular theory suggests that Daniel was inspired by the growing popularity of Valentine's Day cards, which in Massachusetts resident Esther Holland started selling in the mid-1800s. What seems more likely is the explanation is that Daniel drew his inspiration from cocklets, a popular candy shaped like a scallop shell that contained a motto printed on thin roll-up paper. He decided to vise a way to print the messages directly onto the candy. Daniel's conversation candies, or motto lozenges, were not hard shaped until 1902. Around that time, the candy previously sold as a simple disc also started appearing in font shapes like baseballs, horseshoes, and watches. Conversation hearts were a big success over the next century. Other small candy companies started offering similar products. With acquisition of Stark Candy Company in 1990, Neko says it became the leading manufacturer of conversation hearts. Today, the company claimed to produce about 100,000 pounds of sweethearts every day from mid-January to February. It produces approximately 8 billion candy hearts each year. So yeah, you know that favorite Valentine's Day candy, Conversation Hearts? Originally was meant to be throat lozenges. Pretty interesting, huh? Aw, we all know what that song means. It means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified for all the fun here on Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.